perhaps my favorite phrase in all of the gospel are the words that Jesus speaks. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now, that is in itself a slightly unusual phrase. And in this time of prayer, I would like us to dig in deeper into this phrase and to to pray about its full meaning, because in it, our Lord really is telling us very important things for our lives. Now, the context for this phrase is, of course, the Last Supper. You, Lord, have just celebrated that most important meal and instituted the Eucharist with your apostles. And afterwards, there is a long discourse, St. John records it, in which Jesus opens his heart to his apostles. It's very moving, really. But there is also a note of, of tension in it, because, of course, the passion is growing closer, and Jesus is aware of that, and it comes to a, in a sense, to a head in the Garden of Gethsemane, when our Lord enters into a, a great agony. But we can also imagine, Jesus, that as the apostles began to realize more and more that something terrible was about to happen, that you saw in them a growing fearfulness, a growing sadness. We're even told that in the Garden of the Gethsemane, when Peter, James and John fell asleep, they did so out of sadness. Funny enough, it wasn't just sleepiness, but it was a, a sadness that made them want to just, I suppose, conk out. And Jesus addresses this in this lovely line. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So our Lord is, is teaching them not that they won't have tribulations. Our Lord is, is not encouraging them nor us in our turn to be naively optimistic as if some day will come when all our troubles will just vanish. Well, that day is, is the day that we enter into heaven with the grace of God. No, it's not that kind of, of airy optimism. It's an optimism that, that counts on the fact that you will have tribulation. Jesus, you are so clear about that in what you say to the apostles. And, and all of them, bar Judas, of course, will die as martyrs, in fact. They will suffer great tribulations, and finally a tribulation which will be the end of their lives. So, Jesus, you never say to them, nor to us, you, you will have no tribulations. Your life will go swimmingly, and you will have a trouble-free existence. Well, that is, that would be naive, and it would be impossible, of course. No, you will have tribulation, Jesus says. But those tribulations should not sadden us excessively. Of course, they will to some degree. But part of what Jesus is telling us is not to be unduly saddened. Not to be unduly saddened for a very simple reason, a very, very profound reason, is that we have all the motives in the world for a deep, profound optimism. And it's that word, that final phrase that Jesus uses, I have overcome the world. Not, look, not, I will overcome the world. I have. Even before the Passion, Jesus saying, I have already. I am victorious. And that is the motive for a Christian's optimism. In other words, your optimism and my optimism. Ultimately, not that we will ever have a, a tribulation-free life and every day brings with it at least some small tribulations, some days larger tribulations. So Jesus is not saying that, but that there's no reason in the world for those tribulations to remove our happiness, our cheerfulness. And that's a great phrase. That's what I like so much about this. Obviously, it's a translation, be of good cheer. And it's an old translation, I suppose. Be of good cheer. And in fact, just the other day, I heard the etymology of that, that word cheer in, in English as in cheerful or cheery or cheers, and as we say with a drink. And the, and the etymology goes back to, to Latin and the word cara. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of um, a, a form of the word cara. 
this kind of then in, in English became the expression of your emotions is expressed on your face, of course. And cheer didn't mean uh, happy in emotions. It could have meant also bad cheer, as in sadness. And perhaps that's why we, we have that translation, be of good cheer. But then eventually became identified with cheerfulness, happiness. And it is a word that's it's quite nice because it does have that, that sense of cheery, be cheerful, optimistic, upbeat, be of good cheer. Not because you think naively that you won't have tribulations, but rather because Jesus has overcome the world. Now in this, of course, you are warning us also, Lord, not to fall into what is a danger, actually. We don't often think of gloominess or sadness as a danger, but there is something a little bit dangerous about sadness. It saps our energy, takes away all our, our fight. If we give in to sadness, we just kind of give up. We don't fight anymore. Cheerfulness is kind of the, is the virtue of the, the optimist who's pretty convinced that, not that there won't be a fight, but that we will come out victorious of the fight. And that is what Jesus is telling us. And, and, and be careful with sadness, because sadness has kind of given up already. I suppose that's why St. Teresa of, of Avila very famously prayed, Lord, save us from gloomy saints. A gloomy saint, of course, being, in a sense for her, a contradiction in terms. But also, not good news, that gloominess. Because that gloom is, is basically saying, well, it's all over. We've lost the battle. There's no point. We have that motivation. That motivation to continue through the tribulations because Jesus, you have already attained complete victory and we just have to join in with that victory. And of course, that gives us energy. Viktor Frankl, the famous Austrian psychologist, psychiatrist who suffered terribly in, in Auschwitz but survived, he, he observed that in Auschwitz. He observed that when people had a genuine motivation, a meaning, something to live for, they could overcome all kinds of suffering, even those sufferings thrown at them most, most too terribly in outfits. And you could see how we need motivation. We need it so badly. And the greatest motivation we have, the greatest source of hope and meaning that a person could possibly have, of course, is that Jesus is with us. That Jesus, you're with us all the way. You don't prevent us from suffering tribulation, that's part and parcel of life, but you guarantee us the victory. So let us pray. Lord, stay with us. Let us never lose that cheeriness. Let us always be of good cheer. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.